Jesus said, if you, if, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you can ask whatever you will and it will be done. So if you're not asking and not receiving, or if you are asking and not receiving, it's, it's one of the reasons either you're not abiding in him or his words aren't abiding in you. It's just that simple. And your, his words can abide in you easily because all you have to do is think about it all the time. And you can discipline yourself to think along these lines and still do your job. Matter of fact, if you're in a situation, now when I talk about prayer, I'm not just talking about prayer, uh, you know, how most people pray. Number one, it's communion, it's fellowship, it's talking with God, it's carrying on a conversation with God. And it's just like picking up the phone and calling somebody and then not hanging up. You ever have those friends, they'll call you on the phone, and all, they really, sometimes they really don't say anything, but they don't want to hang up. And, the, you know, and, and they lay their phone down, and they're, and they're busy, and they're doing stuff. And, so what are you doing? How are you doing? It's like, I, I'm busy. I'm, I'm doing stuff, you know? And, and you have to carry your phone around or leave it or put it on speaker or something and walk around while you're doing stuff to talk to them. They don't want to, well, that's kind of how you should be with God. Just in the morning, just call him and start out. You know, hey, how you doing? What's, what's on the books for today? What do we got? And just don't hang up. Right? Now, you're going to have some people that are going to walk in and interrupt your conversation with God. And if they do, then you just say, okay, hang on a sec. Okay, here's the problem. Here's the situation. Deal with it. And then afterwards, you go back and talk with God. You don't have to go through the whole thing. Oh, Father, in Jesus' name, I enter into your heavenly courts. I... No, you ain't got to do that. No, we never hung up. Just go right back. I, I got a friend, George. Maybe you know my friend, George. I talk to him almost every night. Or you know about him. He heads up our life team department. And he's a, he's a good brother. And we talk. And we'll talk, you know, a couple of hours a lot of times, almost every night, every other night. He's in Australia, so we're uh, constantly having to talk ministry things. But then we also talk Bible, and, we, and you know, there's a, a friendship and a fellowship and a discipleship aspect going on. But <clears throat> the funny thing is, uh, I'll be talking on the phone, and I'll sit the phone down and, and do whatever I'm doing, <clears throat> and yet at the same time carrying on a conversation. Now, it's the same thing. You can do the same thing with God. You get, maybe you have a job where you're working a certain thing. You've got to do a certain thing, and you need to be able to think about it. You think, how can I pray like that and have my mind on what I'm doing? Easy. Pray in tongues. Amen. Why? Because when you pray in tongues, your spirit prays, but your mind is unfruitful. So your mind is free to do whatever you need to do, but your spirit's still praying. Amen. So just pray in tongues while you're doing your work. You'll do your work better. <clears throat> Wisdom will come out. You'll get promotions. You'll, all that kind of stuff will happen just because you're praying in tongues. And you can pray in tongues without ceasing. The Bible says pray without ceasing. It doesn't tell you what kind of prayer. It just says pray without ceasing. So you can pray in, in your native tongue, if you want to call it that. You can pray in tongues when you need to. You can do intercessory prayer when you need to. You can do, as we would call it, warfare prayer or that kind of thing. Whatever you need to do, you just walk in communion with God. And when you do that, now everything starts to function. It's amazing because then Jesus' words come alive and you're meditating on his words. That's what Joshua 1.8 said. He said, meditate. Don't let this word come out of your mouth. Meditate in it day and night. He said, when you do that, then you will make your way uh, successful. You'll, have good, you'll make yourself have uh, you know, good, you'll prosper and make yourself have success. Right? What does that mean? Meditate. Don't let this word stop coming out of your mouth. In other words, Constantly be saying the Word of God. Meditate the Word of God. Constantly be thinking about the Word of God. Constantly be saying the Word of God. Constantly be, live in it. And when you do, you'll make your way to have good success. That's just the way it works. And whatever you put your hand to will be blessed. <clears throat> then you're not having to ask God to bless what you put your hand to. See, I don't want to have to ask God all the time, God, I'm fixing to do this. Please bless it. No, it's just much better just to know what He wants done and do it, and it'll be blessed. Amen? He said, but how do I know the will of God? Read this. This is the will of God. This book covers every aspect of your life. I don't care what it is, because it's a book of principles. And you can live by the principles, and it'll, it'll alter your conduct in every area of your life. So I'm talking about a lifestyle. Now, 